Good morning. Welcome back to Morning at 10 TV. My name is Malak Vilodera. Thank you so much for your views. We shall be sure to sample them as we continue in this particular segment. Now, in studios, I'm also joined by Madam Sarah Kansime, who is the Secretary, Company Secretary of Eagle Air Limited. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So we are getting into this particular conversation. Is Uganda ready for this airline? Already the airbuses have been purchased. But in terms of the operational cost, what does it roughly entail? Well, uh, maybe to give you a bit of background, I work for Eagle Air, which is one of the only local comp airline companies that work in Uganda. We fly domestic um, to routes to Arua, to Gulu. We also fly internationally. We fly around the region, South Sudan. We have a regular flight there. And so as we are a bit of a smaller company than what the national airline is going to be. But we are the kind of company that feeds into what the national airline will do. They'll be bringing in flights from regional and international, um, bringing passengers from international destinations and regional destinations, and then feeding into the smaller companies like us to be able to fly to destinations that Ugandans fly to within the country. Now, to get an idea of what ru it costs to run an airline, obviously for us, our costs are much smaller than what an airline like um, running an Airbus would cost. Right. Um, we fly, air, uh, fly, we fly um, air, airplanes such as the Beach 1900s and the late 410s, which are 19 seaters, while the Airbus is going to be much more. 76 yeah, 70 seater. seaters. Right. So um, when you're costing an air, uh, what it costs to run an airline, you look first of all at the equipment. Are you leasing it? Are you buying it? And the cost has to be um, included into the passenger ticket because at the end of the day, you have to pay back the cost of purchasing that ticket, that aircraft. Mm -hmm. If it costs $15 million, you're looking at your business plan. How long is it going to take for you to recoup that cost? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to look at the day-to-day -day running costs. First of all, every aircraft that flies has to have insurance. And insurance is going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, for us in our, our aircraft, though it costs a few million dollars, it also costs us hundreds of thousands to be able to keep it safe in the air. Mm -hmm. And that's every year. And that, fly, that component also has to go into the cost of the ticket. Okay. Then thirdly, you're going to look at the fuel because aircrafts need fuel to fly. And that is also in, just know that every time you have your ticket, there's a component there for fuel. Then you're also looking at things as, such as maintenance because every couple of hundred of hours that the aircraft flies, there has to be a corresponding um, time down where it is maintained, where they are supposed to check the spare parts, where engines have to be taken out and be redone and overhauled. And all those components also go back into your air ticket. The good thing is that, like the national airline, they're looking at newer aircraft. Mm -hmm. Newer aircraft have the benefit of having warranties. If there are any problems that happen with the aircraft, you don't have to can send it back to the manufacturer and get it back. You have um, a less like like if you buy a new car, it's less likely to break down than right. if you have a low, an old car. So similarly, you'll find that those are the benefits that the national carrier will have because of purchasing newer aircraft. But at the end of the day, they they still have to be maintained according to the standards that the manufacturer sets for the aircraft. Um, other costs are operational and admin. You're going to have your staff, the person who meets you in the aircraft, you're going to have the person who dispatches the flights, the air hostesses, you're looking at um, the, the HR who manages the employees. Right. And I think the, 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 the airline is going to be hiring a, a couple hundred people. And those are people who have to be paid every month to be able to do their jobs. And especially technical staff. Having technical staff are are crucial. They're the ones who ensure that the aircraft gets off the ground. Your pilots, your engineers, um, your operational staff, and if you and those are are maybe you can say world marketable people. Even if you're Ugandan, if you're licensed to to manage or to fly an aircraft like that, anyone will be wanting you. And right. therefore, we have to pay you enough to be able to come and stay in Uganda and fly that aircraft. And that's going to cost a couple of thousands of dollars for every engineer and pilot that you are hiring. And that cost also has to go into the tickets. Uh, let me ask you, with that breakdown, because it looks like it's intensive cost-wise, Yes. have you broken even? How many years have you been operational? We have been operational for 24 years. Okay. We're going into 25. I can tell you that for our company, we, are, we, are, we work according to the market. 
um, maybe a lot of people ask us, why haven't you gone as far as, you know, flying regionally and internationally by the big aircraft? But we have to be able to collect the money from what is on ground. And the people down who are flying, who can afford to fly, who need to be able to fly, are not that many in our country. But we have to meet that need because we don't have government to give us money to fly. Right. But we do, um, we are a going concern, maybe I can put it that way. <laughs> um, and every once in a while, we do make some money. I can assure you that the aviation industry is up and down, up and down all the time. So I know that there are seasons where it has been really, really tough for us and we have been almost on rock bottom. And there are seasons that have been good. Um, I think I can only credit maybe our management and our board of directors for always changing according to the season, which isn't something that many people do. Mm. And maybe one thing that I remember my managing director told me to mention is that one thing that helps an airline run well is if you have the technical people, the people I told you who help the aircraft take off from the ground. That's the pilot, the engineers, because they know the intricacies of the business. And they are the ones who are able to tell you, this is what you need to do at this particular moment. So it's not like any other business. Have you broken even? Yes, we have. <laughs> Brilliant. After mm. how many years now? Well, well uh, it's been 24 I, I, years, but, but you broke even at what point? I cannot mention oh, okay. um, specifics. You really, okay. I am not in position to All say right. that. But I can say that we are going concern, that there are times we have made profits, mm. and there are times where we have really just managed. But I can tell you that we are still going. And we hope that we will get to a point where we have enough capital to grow and become all the other things that our Ugandan people want. Right. But we are able to meet the needs of the market right now. Mr. Luja, yes. <laughs> with that breakdown, are we mm. ready to get into that space, really? Um, yes. I know you are part of, uh, CAA was part of advising government that, you mm. know what, guys, we need to have this national career as soon as yesterday. True. But with that reality, that particular breakdown, when you engage with government, are we really ready? Yes, we are ready. Like uh, I've been emphasizing before, when you venture into an airline, and a national airline for that matter, the consideration shouldn't be so much as in the cost or the return on investment in the medium or short term. That is not the major consideration. The major consideration is the speed of uh, benefit to the other sectors of the economy. And these are enormous. They are quite enormous. It is therefore important mm -hmm. that as a country we take advantage of these benefits that a national airline brings to the country. The costs involved are important, yes, but these are not going to be recovered in the short term or medium term for that matter. But what the airline brings to the, all the other sectors of the economy mm -hmm. is extremely important for the country. But mm. what people are saying, and I'm looking through the social media feedback that you're getting, is mm. most of these benefits that you're talking of are long term. The things that will realize either midterm or long term. And still the government is grappling with issues to do with paying the civil servants well. Um, mm. We already have issues with the uh, you know, teachers getting paid on time even. Um, the salary increment has been an issue. We mm. have service delivery that is still, you know, struggling. Um, even the hospitals, drug stockouts and all that. So if the government really looked through, mm. um, they're asking, are we not losing out on our priorities? Because uh, getting into an airline space, it's quite mm. capital intensive. Yes, indeed it is. But there are many benefits which are actually short term. Look at uh, tourism promotion, for instance. That is almost an immediate benefit that you're going to get once the airline hits the ground running. It's going to bring in the many tourists. It's going to bring in the many other connecting passengers. Uh, Sarah mentioned how it's going to feed into their operations. Mm -hmm. You can see now a local company like Ego Air is going to benefit from the synergies of the, having the national airline bringing in people that they can easily connect from Entebbe to the other airports in the country. Now those are immediate benefits. Tourism itself and the numbers are big. Mm -hmm. We know that the biggest number of uh, users of air transport, the biggest percentage of travelers are actually tourists. So once this airline contributes to this tourism promotion, we are got getting so many people coming into the country, feeding into tourism, which many people are benefiting from, mm -hmm. directly or indirectly, mm -hmm. through servicing these tour, tour, tourists, tour operators, for instance, the people who work in the parks where they are going. So there's a lot of employment created, both directly by the airline and indirectly by the other beneficiaries from the airline. 
Okay. Mm. Maybe if yes, I could Sarah. add something. Mm -hmm. um, maybe one of the questions we should ask ourselves is if um, why Kenya Airways, which is the national carrier for Kenya, or mm. Rwanda, which is the national carrier for Rwanda, why do they continue to operate their aircraft, their airlines, even though they are making losses for a long period of time? They're actually struggling to survive. Yes, they're struggling to survive, but the government still pours money in a very capital intensive industry because they see the benefits that come out from there and how it affects all other sectors is the forex, foreign exchange earning because you know you find that we are earning very good money that comes from tickets that people pay to come and visit in our countries and one of the things that I found interesting someone was mentioning that a lot of tourists who are coming to Uganda go through Kenya through Kenya Airways and their first understanding of East Africa is okay Kenya has it all but if you they came directly through Uganda they may see things that they may not have experienced somewhere else okay and it will boost our industry as well let's get down to the management and I'll need your view on this mm -hmm. uh, will it uh, between the airline being government owned or private owned what's the right route to take and i have the bite of the former you know uganda airline ceo and maybe mm -hmm. we can take a look at that before you get to answer my question okay, okay. Okay, we'll be getting that bite in a, sh in a few seconds. Um, we're getting it, actually we've gotten it. Okay, let's take a look. And continue limping on, limping on, without enough aircraft, without modern aircraft, you know, without, I mean, uh, enough capital, without uh, uh, modern aircraft. And then you have the perennial African problem of uh, government trying to tell you what you should do and continue limping on, limping on, without enough aircraft, without modern aircraft, you know, without, I mean, uh, enough capital, without uh, uh, modern aircraft. And then you have the perennial African problem of uh, government trying to tell you what you should do. So with the revival of this defunct airline, of mm. course, 17 years ago, it went down. Yes. Do we say that it will help for it to be privately run or government run given the views of the former CEO of the airline? What matters in this respect is uh, guarding against political interference. From what he was saying, he hinted on something to do with government telling you what to do, ABC. The management of the airline ought to guard against interference mm -hmm. from politicians and run the airline on professional standards. I think that is the key thing here. Whether the management is private or appointed by government, the most important thing is for them to stand their ground and do things professionally the way they are supposed to be. But is it possible for the management to be employed by the government and for government not to interfere? Yes, it is possible. Professionalism can be exercised. We have seen it in many different institutions. We have seen it failing in many institutions. Yes, but we have also seen uh, it succeed. So let us be optimistic, <laughs> let us not be pessimistic, eh? let us give this a chance. Mm? Mm. Uh, it is already ongoing. What we need now is how best to make it work. Okay. Yes, All I right. think Sorry, let's, but, but perhaps uh, taking it from the earlier point you are touching on, the figures you are mentioning, for instance, when we are talking about the spillover effects, mm -hmm. I can give you an example. The fact that Uganda had 1.6 million passengers last year, internationally. Those dismal figures, when you compare them to the figures in Nairobi of six plus million passengers and in other airports, and you see all these regional players who have these high traffic figures actually have national airlines when you look at it. But when you do a simple multiplication, for instance, on a very basic charge, there is mm -hmm. a passenger service charge at Entebbe, which is $50 US dollars per passenger. When you multiply that times the 1.6 two million passengers we had. You have so many million dollars, <laughs> which is actually decimal. But assuming these numbers were much more, they were raised to three, four million passengers. Mm -hmm. You can imagine now what the country will be getting okay. just out of passenger service charge. And these numbers we know, passenger traffic at an airport is largely contributed to by a national airline. Okay. Mm. Sarah, your view, to be privately run or government run? Personally, As you come to a close. 
I think uh, privately run is the most efficient. And not just privately run, but you have to v be very careful how you pick the management to run an airline. Because even from our personal experience, it is mm. very difficult to run an airline profitably. Mm. It is one, And it's not just um, something that is unique to Uganda. Everywhere in the world, there are always aircrafts, I mean airlines that are struggling to be able to keep running as going concerns. And therefore, um, there has to be strict financial discipline. There has to be strategic work as you look at what the market needs and being able to respond to that quickly. I think that's where government bureaucracy is very difficult in an airline because at any time you have to change your strategy to right. meet what the what your, your needs are. I mean, for us, I mean, there was a time when schedule flights were our thing. We flew everywhere in Uganda. And then uh, we had uh, the tw 2008 financial crisis happening and a lot of our clients had to cut down on their costs and we're like, how do we manage? And instantly our management said, okay, now we have to change our strategy. What is the market looking at? now and we changed our business model okay. to uh, to meet the needs and the a national carrier to be able to meet the needs of the aviation industry they have to be versatile in that sense and okay. they have to have the technical know-how they need to have the experienced people which I think they do they have some people who have been in the industry who are mm -hmm. for a quite a long time I think it's just maybe the political will to allow this airline to do its work oh, okay Thank you so much, Sarah. And actually, the masses are agreeing with you. And this is social media feedback that you're getting. And most of them are saying, we need to run it privately to avoid government interference for it to actually succeed. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vinay Luja, the manager of Public Affairs, Civil Aviation Authority, thank you so much for coming in studios. Okay. Madam Sarah Kansime, Eagle Air Limited Company Secretary, thank you so much for making time. Thank you for having us. That has been the conversation. We are still watching this space. Keep your views coming. The government is sure to actually look at them. They do look at them. So keep your views coming. The hashtag is morning at NTV. You can also stream us live, NTV Uganda. That's on Facebook and YouTube pages and drop in your comments. Morning at NTV still continues. Keep it here.